so we've talked about ferritin. So uh, kind of looking at iron levels. So how are iron levels measured? Can you provide a, like a little background on ferritin? And kind of what are the official ranges for men and women? And what are your kind of thoughts on that? Right. So, uh, yes, ferritin is the best measure of body iron stores. There are some other measures of iron that are useful if, if uh, for example, a, a physician is looking into, um, you know, iron deficiency anemia or hemochromatosis and things like that. But for uh, everyday purposes, for most people, uh, getting a ferritin test would be enough. So ferritin is a protein that carries iron um, and uh, high ferritin means there are high body iron stores. So as far as um, official, uh, official lab values go, they are um, very much skewed in the wrong direction. Um, for example, in the United States, the Mayo Clinic, which is a leading clinic, um, has, uh, at least it used to have, and I think they've lowered this actually, but at one point they were saying a ferritin level of up to 500 in men was acceptable. And it was up to 400, I think in women. And I, I, the more recent ones I've seen, they've lowered that. Um, now it is something like up to 300 for men and um, up to 200 for women. Both of those upper values are too high, in my opinion. There is very good evidence that um, a, a, a ferritin value of less than 100 is normal, and that um, ferritin values above 100 are associated with worse health. So um, the, the problem here with these lab values is that um, if someone went to, um, went to their doctor and had a ferritin test, let's say a man goes, goes to a doctor and has a ferritin test and um, it, it comes back as 300 or, or higher, at, depending on the lab, the doctor would deem this to be a normal value, whereas I, mm -hmm. I, I would not, it's too high. Um, so people are fooled into thinking, well, you know, for example, my ferritin is 300, so I'm okay. It's not that high. Doctors, uh, hemochromatosis, for example, is a disease of iron overload, a genetic disease, and people with hemochromatosis accumulate very high levels of iron. They have very high ferritin levels. So this is the sort of thing that doctors treat. Um, and they wouldn't so much as look at anybody that has a ferritin level, you know, of say, you know, several hundred or something like that. They're looking for these extremely high ferritin levels of hemochromatosis. Um, so another interesting um, thing about this is that there is a lot of evidence that ferritin levels um, exhibited a dose response effect so that um, even someone with normal ferritin levels, uh, no normal by my lights, say, let, let's, let's just say a ferritin level of 70, can become healthier by donating blood and getting their ferritin levels down, all the way down to what some researchers have called NID, near iron deficiency. They phlebotomized people down to ferritin levels of say 20 or so, and they found they have better glucose tolerance, um, yeah, better uh, vascular endothelial function, and so on. What are the so what, what are the symptoms that you see if somebody has too much iron, or is the only thing that you can do is just take the test and, and see? R Pretty much, that's right. So people with hemochromatosis, these extremely high iron levels do have symptoms. And that's what, um, that's what gets them to, to seek medical help. And that's, that's how it's discovered. But it often goes on for a long time without symptoms. People with more or less normal ferritin levels in the ranges that I've been discussing um, wouldn't see any symptoms. You could say... Um, that you know the symptoms are are all around us uh, because there there's you know 
excess iron is involved in so many diseases. So that to the extent that people are not healthy, you could say these are the symptoms, but as far as specific symptoms of excess iron, at least in the ranges that I've been talking about, no, there, there are none. Okay. Interesting. So would it change like the, the level for postmenopausal women, uh, is it the same kind of level? Does it change? Um, well, their levels do change, definitely. Mm -hmm. But there is no reason for them to. Um, uh, may, maybe a good example, a, a good analogy might be something I've seen a lot. Um, tables of um, acceptable levels of, of body fat for men or women. And you look at these tables and as people get older, they deem you to, they deem a higher level of body fat to be acceptable or compatible with health, but there's no reason for that. Um, so, someone, someone who is older benefits just as much by having a lower level of body fat. In fact, probably even more so than someone who is younger. So in terms of iron levels, there's no reason why, um, you know, a postmenopausal woman, for example, should should uh, have a ferritin level of 200, and and that be be being deemed as normal and healthy, as compared to a premenopausal woman. Woman. So, um, these lab values are very much skewed. Um, the the upper ranges are too high, in my opinion. Um, one way of looking at this is when you look at how normal lab values are made. So, um, you know, you might wonder, you go, you go to uh, get, a, get a, a clinical lab test and of, of whatever it might be and uh, comes back with a normal range, what, you know, what it's supposed to be. So how do, they, how do they figure out what's normal? Well, basically they take 95% of the values of what they deem to be normal, healthy people, and then deem that to be normal. Um, but in this context, normal, healthy people means basically anybody who's walking around who doesn't have a diagnosis of some specific disease. And we can all see what kind of shape people are in uh, these days. Um, so, you know, many of these normal lab ranges are, uh, while they might be normal in the sense that they are average or typical, um, they are not optimal for health, many of them. And the ferritin level definitely falls into that category.